Right here. Oh, man, oh, there you go. There I am. Hello, I'm unmuted. Nice, Russ. Good to see you, man. Hi, Russ. So, so yes, good to see you as well. Uh, I am currently at 4,420 feet elevation in a little eastern Oregon mountain town called Sumter. And this, uh, what you're seeing here behind me, is our legal, uh, licensed, regulated cannabis shop. So uh, I'm a co-owner in this shop, and I'm up here running the shop for now, although it's still morning here, so we're not actually open. Uh, and then the shore, uh, Hemp World, which is in Boise, Idaho. So I'm kind of straddling Oregon, Idaho border these days, going from one jurisdiction that is probably the most marijuana-friendly jurisdiction in the United States, Oregon, into the other jurisdiction, which is after this coming election will be the last jurisdiction in North America where all THC use for any purpose by anybody is illegal, including less than 0.3% THC hemp, illegal in the state of Idaho. <laughs> oh, man. So let me correct me if I'm wrong. Are you, you are in Idaho because of your dad and you are you're the activist of activists going around Idaho looking for petition signatures, I believe, at this point. That's the only reason you would actually be in Idaho. That's right. Uh, my father just turned uh, 78 years old. He's had uh, diabetic peripheral neuropathy for about 20 years. Doctors have him on a peanut dose. Uh, and he was just, his brain was all fogged up, which was sad because he's hyper intelligent. I mean, that's where I learned how, uh, and you know, stops up the bowels and has all sorts of other terrible side effects. You got to have the, the pills and then you got to have the pill for the pill and then you got to have the pill for the pill for the pill. And it was just crazy. And uh, he came to visit me when I was living in Portland, Oregon. And some uh, one to one THC CBD teacher. Right, because you also have to understand, my dad is a, a, a forty-year recovered uh, alcoholic and drug addict, and a former drug and alcohol counselor. So the last thing in the world he wants to do is get high. And I said, "Well, Dad, you're on sixty milligrams of morphine. Uh, <laughs> come <yeah>. on, <laughs> talk about high." <laughs> so uh, he tried the tincture. You know, he tried it under his tongue, and he was it was like you know miracle. And I know a lot of hurt the medical marijuana miracle story. Oh, it cured my cancer. It helped my epilepsy. We've heard it all. But man, when it's coming from your dad, it just hits you in a whole new way. Because he told me, he he said that my pain scale without anything is like a 10 on a 10, uh, 10 out of 10. He goes, when I take the 60 milligrams of morphine, it takes me down to about a 5 out of 10. So it's still hard to sleep and all. He goes, this tincture, Russ, it took me to zero. Like I had no pain, zero pain for the first time in 20 years. Sure. So. Amazing. Once the medical cannabis, I'm, I'm not going to send him back to Idaho and force him to have to, you know, go back on morphine. And so he's like, well, how do I get this stuff? And I go, well, you don't, Dad. You live in Idaho. It's a felony in Idaho. You go to prison <laughs> in Idaho. Well, uh, you know, and you can bring me some. I'm like, the fuck, I can. <laughs> I'm going to be, a, you know, an inter interstate drug smuggler with my profile. Uh, oh, anyway, I said, kind of jokingly, I said, well, you know. Idaho's got the initiative system. You could always, you know, put in a petition to change the law. Well, how do I do that? Oh, shit. He's, he's serious. <laughs> oh, no, I guess. And, and long story short, we ended up uh, putting together a petition to uh, legalize medical marijuana in the state of Idaho this year, which was, you know, it was already all volunteer effort. It was already squeaking, you know, the closest to the margins we could be. And then coronavirus hits and takes out our, our whole raising, our whole springtime you know, signature gatherings. So it doesn't look like we'll be able to make the ballot this year. And, and it's pretty sad because the only other jurisdiction in America that has zero acceptance of uh, marijuana, even medical, uh, even CBD is South Dakota. They've got both medical and recreational on, on the, the ballot. ballot. Quite, <clears throat> quite astonishing. That would be the last state in America where you can't even have CBD oil. We tried to pass a hemp bill this year just because, you know, the United States government, the whole federal government has legalized hemp under the 2018 Farm Bill. So in America, finally, like most civilized nations, you can grow industrial hemp crops, which are you know, internationally determined to be 
less than 0.3% THC for absolutely arbitrary reasons. But anyway, that you know, the federal <laughs> government said, okay, that's fine. We're good with industrial hemp. But state laws still have to change, right? So it just doesn't force the states to make it legal. So Idaho is one of these states that still didn't have a hemp law. And, and famously, they had a trucker come through from Oregon where it's legal trouble with like 2,700 pounds of hemp in his yes. trailer and the Idaho cops pulled him over and trumpeted on the evening news, the largest drug bust in Idaho history <laughs> is hemp. <laughs> right? it's just like, oh, this stuff. So uh, the, the guy that they, they ended up putting the, the trucker in jail that was big, you know, brouhaha on the news about it. He did eventually end up getting uh, released from jail. He ended up spending five days in jail. He got like a misdemeanor and a fine. And the misdemeanor had to do with not having the proper paperwork declaring that he was trucking industrial hemp across Idaho, which is kind of screwy because there is no such <laughs> paper. Like they, they give them a doesn't exist. All right. So to try to fix that, the Idaho legislature came up with a bill this year, said, all right, we'll up our Industrial hemp, you know, we'll make a definition that says industrial hemp is, you know, less than 0.3% THC will match the federal law. And the Idaho governor, Brad Little, veto contain THC. Unbelievable. So this is all now kind of put on hold with this whole virus thing going on, Russ. Describe to us what's going on. Is there any difference in what they, in, in Idaho's, regulations of lockdown to Washington states or or, or Oregon's Are there, uh, just like weed laws uh, the Wa Washington and Oregon yeah Washington and Oregon did theirs uh, sooner and more comprehensively but shockingly for being as Republican right-wing red state as Idaho has uh, it actually has done some you know lockdown and, and, and some procedures that are you know pretty good uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with Idaho's proximity to Washington and Oregon, right? You can't have a free-for-all going on in Idaho and then a lockdown going on in Washington and Oregon. It didn't really, uh, didn't really fly. So uh, it's been all right. Um, you know, as far as if you told me that I'd be forced to stay inside on my computer all day, smoking weed and avoiding people, I'd tell you, you know, I've been trying to do this my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely right. We're doing the same. I mean, Myrtle and I have lived on this property for, for years and we've been at home a lot. And now we find it easier than many, many people to be in this sort of isolation. We, we, we're putting it to good use. But we, you, you maybe have seen some yeah, pictures I about South Africa with the army in the streets and a lot of trouble going on and all sorts of stuff going on. Is there a bigger police presence in your part of the world? Are there army there? Are there more travel restrictions? You're not going to get a truck full of hemp through Idaho at this point, are you? <laughs> no, no, you know, the, we've gotten nowhere near that here. Or at least in the West. I don't know what's happening in, say, like New York, New Jersey area. But here it's just, you know, the streets are somewhat empty, but if you get some gasoline at the gas station or go to the store, I mean, they've done some things like at the grocery store, you know, you're supposed to wear a mask and, and they've got little stickers on the floor to tell you to stay six feet apart. And they've made the shopping aisles one way so that you're not crossing past people. But aside from that, it, it hasn't really been seen as a big deal where I'm at just because it's, it's largely rural. And so there's not, you know, a, a big, a big a hue and cry to go out to the nightclubs or whatever. I mean, uh, people sure. are just rural country people, and so it hasn't <clears throat> affected them too much. And in um, in Portland, Oregon, is it classified as an essential item like it is in other states? Are there dispensaries open? Yes. And you uh, can... Yes. The uh, state of Oregon has declared uh, that the medical marijuana, that's why I'm here up in Sumter running our dispensary, you know, we uh, uh, ran out of employees. We, one of our employees actually got uh, COVID-19, you know, pretty seriously, you know, ICU kind of uh, stuff. So uh, myself, I'm one of the owners and my partner, Lori, she's also one of the co-owners. I'm here in Sumter while she's in Boise. Then we flip flop, you know, you know, so we're traveling quite a bit. It's hundred and let's see, 180 miles between the two places or 150 miles between the two places. So we're driving, yeah, it's been, uh, it, it, it's, 
it's been quite quite an ordeal up here, I gotta say. <laughs>